Hello and good morning from Toulouse Airport. Today I'll be taking two flights in Air France's economy class. I'll be checking out the lounges of both Toulouse Airport and Charles de Gaulle Airport. But that's assuming they'll actually let me in. And each of these flights is just a little bit over an hour of flying time. So if you're interested to see what it looks like to fly Air France and economy class on short haul flights these days, then come on with me and let's go check it out. Starting with the premium access. Bonjour. Which you want? There you go. Why not? But sometimes things do go wrong when you want to access lounges, unfortunately. Usually they really don't, to be honest, this is a very rare occurrence, but I have ITA Airways status, which is not so well registered in the Air France system as I've noticed. I've always been able to get into all the other Air France lounges but this is one of their partner lounges down in Toulouse. So they're kind of giving me the stiff arm, but they did say the manager would come through. So hopefully someone will show up soon and we can actually get into the lounge before our flight takes off. I mean, it's kind of a bummer when you plan to sit in the lounge for an hour, drink your coffee and stuff in the morning, and you don't even eat breakfast at your hotel. Yeah, so here, it's uh, the, the second lowest status. This one, gold. Yeah. And it's anybody with Sky Team status flying on any Sky Team airline, Air France or KLM, if you have the access, it's global. It is just uh, as mm. detail and here. If you want, I can call Air France. Hello. You already ah, sure. Yeah. So we're entering with our ITA Airways this uh, this status, uh, but ITA. she she cannot. It's in our boarding pass, but she doesn't see it. It's um. Um, yeah, it's Sky Team. Sky Team. Okay. Yeah, we have. Which your statue? The uh, status in Sky Team is. Sky Team. One. It's Elite Plus. Uh, yeah, so it's this one, Elite Plus. Car Elite, Elite Plus. Company Sky Team. Yeah. Um, also. France. So hmm. Tommy is not is not correct to answer here. Uh, yeah. So this is the issue. This is the third one here. It says clearly that I have access. Company, company Sky Team, uh, Elite Plus card. See presentation. Yeah, she saw your statue and she told me. If the real person in charge says that they don't want to recognize the Sky Team status anymore, then okay, no problem. Uh, but I, I need to talk to the boss for sure. Oui, uh, j'ai le monsieur qui veut parler à quelqu'un de France. All before any coffee. <laughs> Oui. Oui. Are you from Air France? No. Ah, sorry. No. I saw your uh, your necklace with Air France. <laughs> Let's see if someone actually shows up because our flight is now in like 30 minutes. Someone is coming. No, oh, okay, perfect. From Air France. It's really weird. I don't know yeah, why it's I'm having sorry. this issue. Okay, not your fault, I guess. Tell me, no, you can't, so I can't. Okay, but they'll come soon because our flight is like soon. Yeah? Mm, yeah. Sorry, I thought you'd been briefed yeah, on the situation. This is my boarding pass. Thank you. Which should also have that in it, but was an issue. Can you show me a this is not the first time I had some issues with the Italian airway. 
complicated. Well, three years now, the three same. Years. Yeah, yeah, not so recent anymore. Sorry. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, merci. C'est pas grave. <laughs> Drink some coffee. Uh, Bonjour, euh, c'est ici le café? Ah oui, oui c'est tout cassé. Okay, it works. But this partner lounge in Toulouse isn't nearly as nice as Air France's own lounges, and it's already time to board. I did try to get some footage of the plane before boarding, but I got shut down really quick by the gate agent. But boarding did commence shortly after, and I was pretty happy to just be getting out of Toulouse airport at that point. And after a much shorter lounge stay than I'd planned, I'm now here in the aircraft, and we're going to be pushing back in just a few minutes, it looks like. Seems like everything will be on time for this flight from Toulouse up to Charles de Gaulle in Paris. But once we're in the air, I'll show you how the service on board is, maybe give you a look at the bathroom, and then take a look at a few other things. So let's take in some of the views, see what else they have to offer, and we'll be in Paris in no time. So before we even reached out to it, I thought I'd just head back and check out the bathroom before it gets dirty. But it's already a little bit dirty to be honest. This is a pretty old Embraer aircraft and it also shows in the bathroom here. But for such a short flight, it definitely gets the job. I did notice the flight attendant preparing some snacks and drinks, so I look forward to seeing what Air France is offering these days because it's been a little while since I flew them in economy or any other class. But since the plane did not seem all that clean, I made sure to give my seating area a good wipe down first. It's definitely a nice touch that Air France hands out alcohol wipes in economy class still, though. And for the short hop that this flight was, they actually had pretty nice in-flight service. They give you a little cookie, you can decide if it's sweet or salty. And then they actually have coffee. A lot of other airlines in Europe don't have coffee at all for free anymore, so it's a really nice touch that Air France still does. And there seemed to be a pretty good variety of other beverages. I'd hope they also have Orangina, but I didn't want that right now this early in the morning. And even though this flight is branded as Hop, it's really pretty much the same thing as what I've experienced in shorter Air France economy flights in the past. So the only thing that I find a bit negative is the level of cleanliness. It's not like 100% clean, but for short flights, it's pretty comfortable, pretty okay. And I'm excited to see what the second flight looks like on a slightly bigger Airbus A321 that will be taken later over to Berlin from Paris. So stay tuned, I will check out the lounge in Paris, Charles de Gaulle, and then we'll hop on a second flight over to Berlin, which is also only about an hour and 30 minutes. And it can really take forever to get anywhere in Charles de Gaulle Airport, but I made it to the lounge. This lounge has some really tasty French food. There's also pretty good coffee here too. Plus they have desserts. There's quite a few other desserts available here too. So it looks kind of like a berry based with some white cream and chocolate on top. Let's see. Hmm. A little sour. And this one, I'm gonna guess this is some kind of vanilla cream with like a chocolate brownie type thing in the middle. Hmm. And some almonds. Hmm. C'est bon. And the second lunch, why not? And like any good airport lounge, all the Air France lounges over here at Charles de Gaulle have showers for you. And this one is especially nice. I like it a bit more than the British Airways would, to be honest. Or any of the other ones we've gone to, really. It's got nice soaps from Clarence. We've got a shaving kit. Two brushes you needed. Comb. And you can even wipe down over here. Ah, sorry, no, this is deodorant. Right? <laughs> That's kind of cool. 
but it's shower time, so I'll catch y'all pretty soon for a little more of that tasty French coffee. It's actually quite normal to have a shower in the lounge when you're doing like long haul international. The thing is, I'm just flying on two short one hour plus a tiny bit flights today. And I was still able to access the shower here at Terminal 2F at Charles de Gaulle. And the ticket was pretty good value too. I paid 7,500 flying blue miles for it. Plus, I think it was somewhere around 47 euros in taxes and fees, which is not bad at all. Okay, of course in the US you'll pay like 560 USD for your taxes and fees, uh, but it's just not like that over here in Europe. So it's a pretty solid deal. Plus I've got a little over four hours over here to hang out in the lounge, eat lunch, <laughs> breakfast too maybe drink uh, unlimited coffee, read magazines, take a shower, do some work. Oh yeah, and I nearly forgot to mention that there's a spa in this lounge. But beware that the appointments are really hard to get. The earlier you get to the lounge and the longer your layover, the higher the chances of actually being able to get a spa appointment. But if you can get in, the treatments are really nice and they'll even give you a little bit of free clearance product to take home. Style. Keep in mind that Charles de Gaulle Airport can be a little bit of a mess sometimes, especially if you're going from anything outside of the EU to a domestic EU flight. But this time it was actually pretty okay because I was going from EU to EU and because I went to the lounge, of course. Always go to the lounge. Well, let's check out the second flight on the A321. Due to the sky priority, I was able to be one of the first to board. This seat is a little bit tight. If you watched my British Airways review, that was also a little bit tight. This is the same kind of aircraft, an A321. Well, that was an A321 Neo, this is A321, tiny bit older. But it definitely seems comfy enough for a pretty short flight. So we're going to find out exactly how consistent Air France is across their economy class short haul products. But after that nice stay in the lounge, I'm pretty much ready for whatever they throw at me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your captain. Unfortunately, today we have to change one wheel which is damaged. Thank you anyway, we can stay in this plane. Uh, we should depart within 45 minutes. Sorry about that. Thank you. Front row. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. Uh, now we're about to leave uh, to join Berlin in one hour and 30 minutes. It's cloudy uh, for departure. Here we're all doing the trip. It's slightly cloudy in Berlin with uh, 10 degrees Celsius. I wish you a night five. I leave you now under the care of uh, Mrs. Uh, Vanessa Ott and her team. And we're back. In the end, I felt like the crew dealt really well with this unavoidable delay. And our departure ended up being about 30 minutes late. As is very often the case at Charles de Gaulle Airport, the taxi out to the runway seemed like it just took forever. But eventually, we were airborne. We've taken off and we're almost at cruising altitude. I think it's an hour and 30 minutes total, so cruising won't actually take that long. And I can see that service is just about to start too, as I saw the flight attendants just pass by. And so far, the big difference that I'm seeing between that domestic Embraer flight and the A321 I'm flying on now is that there's the option to purchase in-flight Wi-Fi on this flight. It costs five euros, which uh, I definitely wouldn't pay for for an hour and 30 minute flight. But if you just have to be online, then there's definitely the option. And one nice touch is that messaging is free. I do hope to see Wi-Fi become free on Air France in the future, as is the trend of the industry these days. But for now, on a one and a half hour flight, you're probably not really going to need Wi-Fi that bad. And if you really did, five euros isn't the most ridiculous price I've seen. And on this flight, instead of just a cookie or something, they actually offered a kind of a small sandwich and you had the choice of either one with pork and a brioche bun or or some kind of vegetarian sandwich on wheat bread. So I went for the pork one and it was pretty decent. Nothing to write home about, but for food on an intra-European flight, it's one of the best things you're gonna find in economy class. But we've probably got about 40 minutes left in flight. So let's head back and check out the bathroom while there's still time. And the bathroom's not terrible. You know, we're a little over halfway through the flight, so it is a little bit dirty, but it does seem like they're keeping it clean from time to time. And there are two bathrooms in the back because this is a much bigger aircraft with a lot more people, but really not much to say about it besides pretty satisfactory. And really, even despite the delay, the way they dealt with it was really acceptable. And I mean, Air France offers a really solid experience for short haul economy flights in Europe. But when it comes to the experience that their partner lounge down in Toulouse had to offer, that's a different story. Even after I was able to enter the lounge after 40 minutes, it wasn't that impressive of a lounge. And the mere fact that somebody with lounge access would have to wait around 40 minutes just to enter the lounge is unacceptable. So I do think Air France needs to look into their ability to communicate with their partner lounges and take a thorough look at their systems and figure out why some data may not be shown correctly. But in the end, I placed most of the blame for my horrible lounge experience on the lounge itself. And while I'm pretty sure I'm just going to avoid La Croix du Sud lounge in the future like the plague, if the price were right again and they were flying the routes I needed, then I would definitely choose Air France to be honest. But that really covers it for this one, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more and make sure to get this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more travel videos.
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, pass. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, Desiree, Desiree, Desiree.